Hi everyone, welcome to part two of my two-part video series where I'm making this cute little bunny lovey. So in the first video, if you missed it, it's gonna be linked below, but I basically am doing the whole beginning to end of this little bunny character. So first things first, I determined how big I wanna make my bunny lovey blanket. I decided that I wanted it to be about 12 by 12 inches. So I go ahead and make sure that all of my edges on my fabric are nice and squared, 90 degree angles, so everything is very precise and even. I measure out about 12 and a quarter of an inch for my gingham print and this is just on the reg regular cotton fabric. Then when it came time to do the, the gauze fabric, the, that swaddle fabric, I ended up doing 13 inches. This one is a little bit trickier to sew because it does bunch up and it's just easier to have a lot more to work with or at least that's what I found is easiest for me. So I had a healthy, what is that, an inch and a quarter um, extra on the sides for the muslin part. So I go ahead and cut 13 inches and for some reason the lady at Joann's told me that I needed to rip it in a certain direction so I just do what I'm told. <laughs> And I ripped it. I think that's so the thread doesn't come out. And if you cut it, I think it it gives it a chance for the threads to become undone more easy. That's just my guess. Um, so yeah, I go ahead and I press everything with my iron. And once everything is placed and I determine which direction my patterns are going, then I go ahead and I pin everything down and I made the cotton fabric nice and centered, well, almost centered, into that gauze fabric so I have lots of room to work with. After I got all of my pieces measured out, I made sure that I was placing the bunny face in the direction that I want it to come out when I turned it inside out. So I wanted the gingham print to be on the side of the bunny's face and not on the back of its head. So I placed those two sides together and I just pinned everything down. I determined that I wanted it to be in the middle and this part you can kind of move it around. Maybe you could even put it in a corner, whatever you desire I guess. Then I pinned down the ears just for some extra stability and I kind of made my two marks and I made sure to keep my hole open big enough so that the little bunny head can come through when I turn it inside out. So for extra security I use a zigzag stitch and I basically just went all the way around um, making sure that I'm not bunching up the gauze fabric on the back and I just went all the way around. I, I'd say this is about an eighth of an inch that I left as a seam allowance. Sewing the bunny between the two pieces of fabric is probably the most trickiest part out of this whole thing. So I just went really slow making sure that the gauze on the back wasn't bunching up and I made sure to back stitch on both sides of the bunny's neck to make sure it's nice and secure. Um, having it nicely pinned and using those pins to keep the stuffing out of the way of the needle definitely helps. It does get a little bit bulky. I should have lessened the pressure of my foot. I think that would help a lot when it comes to um, the tighter areas, but I'm always up for a challenge and I just use a little hemostat to kind of help me through there. But yeah, after that, it's pretty smooth sailing from there. For the rest of the video, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and let the music play. If you have any questions, please comment it down below. I didn't really chat too much in the last video. I feel like I don't really explain myself well, so I didn't want to be too confusing. Um, so yeah, if you have a question, just leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.
just kidding. I'm back. I feel like I need a little bit of explanation here on the on this little time lapse. I ended up doing a simple grid pattern. It's a top stitch, so that's just making stitches on the top of the fabric that's going to be seen. I started in the middle and just kind of folded it in halves to find where the next center part would be and I kept on doing that. I think there is a 4x4 four four grid. So I thought that was a, just an extra little touch that made the pattern or made the print on the back look a little bit more finished. After that it's pretty much done. Um, you can stop there and it's just going to be a cute little 12x12 12 12 bunny blanket or you could do a little extra step and I decided that I wanted to try and make some feet. Um, I went ahead and bunched up the corners and I started stitching them in and out, in and out, in and out to really secure that. Um, then I knotted it and sunk the knot into the fabric so you can't see it and it created a cute little paw. Finally, don't forget to wash your little lovey before you give it to your little ones. I usually just throw this in with the rest of the baby clothes and it's on a cold gentle cycle. Um, you can either hang them up to dry or I also just throw mine in the in the dryer and they seem to hold up just fine. I guess that's the true test of the of how well your stitches are, right? And that's pretty much it guys. I hope that you like this video and that you're inspired to make a little bunny lovey of your own or just create in general. So. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy creating! Okay, and here it is out of the washing machine and the dryer. So it didn't really shrink too much, maybe a little bit. But it looks nice and loved. And this is the one that's been washed like I don't know how many times. <laughs> here you go, come get your bunny! Like it? Oh no, where'd the bunny go?